you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Is concerned. Three scriptures, and then I'll begin my teaching. Number one, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Here's what the Bible says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. I have set before you blessing and cursing. Therefore, I can't force you, but here is my counsel. Choose life that both you and your seed may live. Straight up, we see that the implication of your choices goes beyond you. Your seed will be part of your choices. It says, choose life so that you and your seed may live. Per adventure, you choose death. Then you and your seed will also die. Are we together? Scripture number two. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24 from verse 13. We're reading 13 to 15. Joshua 24, 13 to 15. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not do ye eat. 14. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. Let's read verse 15. If you can see projected. Ready? One to read. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites. But as for me and my house. Have you seen that every time it has to do with destiny choices and decisions, it goes beyond you. It is always you and your house. It is always you and your seed. It says, as for me and my house, this is the decision we will serve the Lord. Last scripture, 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 19. This was the contest at Mount Carmel with prophet Elijah. Now therefore, he said, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, please back to 19, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table, 20 now. So Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together onto Mount Carmel. Let's read 21 together. One to read. And Elijah came down uh -huh, and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people... A great and very wise man made a very profound statement and he said your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life you may want to write that down and please pay attention your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life. I think it was Dr. Modok who said, decisions decide destiny. That your destiny is at the mercy of the kind and the quality of decisions that you make. Our world is full of divides across um, 
social status we have wealthy people we have what we call the middle class we have those we call poor people our world is full of individuals who seem to be icons across different fields of endeavor and then the other side of the pendulum has men and women who are lessons for generations to come old and aged people are full of regrets and stories of wasted years wasted moments wasted there are many people today who continue to live in regrets and pain as a result of the wrong or poor choices that they made in fact in our world and in our, our continent even in our nation Chances are excellent that when you sit with a very old man and ask him to me, half of the stories will be full of regrets. Regrets of times wasted, opportunities wasted. Hallelujah. And yet the Bible is very clear as to the fact that in Christ, everyone has been called to a life of honor, a life of glory, a life of dignity. I think he was Bishop david Oedipo, who said there are no low callings in christ that everyone has been called and preordained unto a high calling but unfortunately and i pray it does not become our testimony this night that out of a handful of people statistically speaking out of every 10 people maybe just one or two actually rise to the fullness of their prophetic potential within their lifetime am i doing something wrong okay thank you are we together yes our world is full of people who wake up early in the morning and sleep late in the night people making no progress whatsoever as i would always say the only thing growing in their life is their age nothing else no impact and i'm glad that this is a church of wisdom your pastor and his dear wife have they, they have helped you understand the human nature from a sociological and a relational standpoint so you're not in ignorance as to the factors that must be captured in the life of an individual for him or her to find fulfillment i can tell you there are many people who are just existing but they are not living and it is my desire as instructed by God to communicate and open our eyes to see that the unit of destiny is time and that whether you are prepared or not with every passing time you may not get it back again and that it is your decisions that move you forward time does not change time only reveals one day go better is just a sociological cliche that mediocres put around their lives to find consolation you do not arise and shine because you are tired of sitting you arise and you shine when your light comes are we blessed my goal among other things is to challenge and provoke someone tonight to let you see that your life as it is right now in summary is a product of the kind and the choices and decisions that you have made and let me tell you the truth i sat back and i saw such a beautiful prophetic word that came from your man of god the year of the lord did you know that there are people regardless the prophetic word that comes for them their prophetic word has been the same for the last 10 years a life or a year of failure next year repeat next year re doesn't matter what prophetic word comes you see because they have not learned that when it has to do with advancement and destiny that a lot depends on them and then there is an angle to christianity that sponsors irresponsibility where people hand over everything to jesus and just believe you took the risk i didn't ask you you died for me finish what you started and then people just hands off and don't take responsibility over their lives and they find out that they move from failure
to failure. Someone shout, God forbid. Are we learning? So your decisions more than your conditions decide your destiny. There are people today who blame the government for their failure. There are people who blame parents. There are others who blame tribe. There are others who blame some sad and negative event that happened. I was so inspired by the gentleman who came, I don't know his name, the gentleman who came dancing here before I came up. Because I think he ministered yesterday, same song. And I was so inspired. And I said, this was someone who was crushed by what a legitimate reason to remain a mediocre. We live in a world where we have mastered the act of attracting sympathy. We, we look for a loophole, something that is legitimate and we cash in on it and expect the whole world to stand still because decisions decide destiny. I wrote here and I want you to pay attention as you listen. Every choice and every decision in life is connected to a consequence. Please write it down. Very, very important information. Every choice and every decision in life is connected to a consequence. A consequence means the corresponding outcome in honor to the decision you have taken. Consequences can be negative or positive. Are we together? You are not given the liberty to choose consequences. Only your choices have the power to choose consequences. You cannot choose consequences. You can only make decisions and choices. It is the decisions and the choices you make that choose your consequences. This already is a word of advice. If I know that I do not have the power to choose my consequences, it means before I make any decision and any choice, I find out what consequence is tied to that choice. Is that true? So, if you have the opportunity to engage with the Holy Spirit, He will show you an array of decisions and the corresponding consequences connected to them. This is what we saw in reading that scripture. I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. I gave you a will and so I cannot assume that you love life. But here is my counsel. For the sake of you and for the sake of your children, choose life that you may live. Choose life that you may live. I am surprised, very surprised, at so many people who continue to make bad, poor, ill-informed, and sometimes demonic decisions and expect that magically their lives continue to veto their decisions and still become an expression of God's desire. There are many of us who have made wrong financial decisions, wrong relational decisions, wrong destiny decisions, and then we continue to wonder why our lives do not become an expression of the grace and the glory of God. And this is a very blessed church. I was commending the woman of God on behalf of her and her husband, telling them how much that the truths that they communicate go beyond the membership of this church to blessing people literally across the body. Are we together? There are many people who have made poor choices as far as their career pursuit is concerned. They made wrong choices and they are now paying for it. Many people who made poor choices, for instance, no financial resources, no jobs, and they were determined to have nine children. Are we together? Now, I'm not, don't feel bad if... if, if if it attempts to describe you but i'm just this is why we're in the house of god nine children seven male two female then you wonder why africa has a very short lifespan 
it is said that in Nigeria the lifespan is 48 years very obvious reason scientific reasons not just demonic reasons because of the kind and the quality of thinking and decisions that come are we together now yes decisions decide destiny there are many corporations while while we drove coming to the church I saw different business outfits some small some literally as if nothing is going on there and then some magnificent buildings and I thought to myself my God all of the people who own these things have the same frame the same brain the same everything the difference the kind and the quality of decisions that they made there are six destiny decisions that any individual who must rise and thrive in life you must be able to pass the test of making these six destiny decisions please I want you to pay attention and like the woman of God said with the intention to learn by the way let me define decisions please look up what does it mean to decide because there are many of us what we call decisions are not decisions there is a difference between a wish and a decision a wish is a desire right targeted towards a goal or an outcome in your life a decision is a desire to do something to achieve something that is backed up with the willingness to pay any price under God to see that that desire comes to pass. The difference between a wish and decisions is commitment. When you add commitment to desire, it now becomes a decision. So many people continue to wish for a great life. Others wish for an anoint I wish I would be as anointed as this man. I wish I will be rich. I wish I would have influence. I wish I would study my Bible every day. I wish that my prayer life would come back to life. I wish mere desires. Desire is important but not sufficient to produce any glorious destiny. Please, you must learn this. The moment there is no commitment factor to desire, it remains a will. A decision is a desire that is backed up with the determination under God to see that whatever action you will take under God is taken to see that that dream becomes a reality. Are you seeing that most of the things that happen in our lives are just wishes? Many of you shop online. And um, when you shop online, there is something called a wish list. Have you seen it? Nobody accuses you for leaving it there. You can wish all kinds of things and laugh at yourself while you are dumping those things there. I need this dining set, three million. You add it. It's a wish. Remember, remember, it's a wish. It keeps adding, and then you watch it and leave it there. And sometimes two years, three years, five years is there. It's called a wish list. But there is another column close to it where they can say, is it check out and pay or pay and check out immediately? You know, you can buy now. And then you buy now and check out and pay. And then the order is ready to get to you. Many people have these psychological and spiritual wish lists and for many of us we've had it for decades strong desires in our hearts that are not backed up with the willingness to commit ourselves to bring it to pass and I pray that tonight as we examine these six decisions may it change our lives forever believe me if you pay attention to what I'm teaching you you will marvel and wonder at what happens in your life within one month of of understanding this and applying it number one the first decision that you must make in order to excel in life to live an uncommon life and an uncommon destiny is the decision to know the Lord 
and to be exceptional in your spiritual life. Write it down, please. In order of priority, the decision to know the Lord and the decision to be exceptional as far as your spiritual life is concerned. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Here's what the prophet said. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Did I get that right? Help me, I'm looking for the scripture. Let not the wise man, is it 12? Check for me please. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Verse 12, thank you. No. Please search it for me. Huh? Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Huh? Beautiful. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man, look up please, glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Now 24. Let's read together. One, two, read 24. But let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth it and knoweth me. Stop there. That the real glory of the believer in this kingdom is that you understand God and you know God. Do you know, we live in a world where if a young man comes and tells you, I'm a graduate, I had first class, but I hate Jesus Christ. I hate anything God, but I'm a serious person. You say, that's all right. At least you are educated. It's just that you are not serious with God. And we sweep it under the carpet. We have downplayed the issue of spirituality and left it to church and pastors. The Bible says, listen carefully that let not the wise man glory in his strength, the rich man and all of that, that him that glories, he should glory in the fact that he knows the Lord. John chapter 17 and verse 3. Jesus is praying and here's what he said. John 17 and verse 3. He says, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. There are many believers who love the fruits of a healthy relationship with Jesus but are not willing to commit themselves in truth. There are people who have made up their minds that they will not be serious with God. In fact, they frown at anything that drives them into a deeper relationship. The moment you mention fasting, they frown prayer five minutes they say it's enough God is not deaf you see all these kinds of things are the indices that make for a weak and beggarly spiritual life and it is dangerous because you raise your children spiritually to honor your conviction God if you do not respect God and God does not seem like a big deal to you it is impossible to raise a mighty man under God being a lazy man spiritually yourself are we together? You will only raise your children to reflect your convictions about God. Every arm robber came from a family. Is that true? Every terrorist and every troublemaker disturbing society today came from a family. And respectfully speaking, most of them, the disaster in a nation starts within a region. The disaster within a region starts within a family. The disaster within a family starts within an individual who neglected his role. Chances are excellent that if you do not show your child the way of the Lord, the devil will escort him to another group of careless individuals and they will build that strong momentum and he will begin to grow and evolve until he becomes one who will cause mayhem to society. Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. Every community problem was first a family problem. And every family problem, most family problems are traceable to the neglect of someone. The decision to know the Lord 
and to be serious spiritually. During the pandemic last year, most all churches, I think, there was a compulsory, how many months? Two or three months break. Do you know that two or three months break, there were people who by the time they called back, they needed to dig them from a spiritual hole and bring them out to say start with God afresh because just three months of lack of pastoral assistance plunged many people into a realm that is almost as if they never knew Jesus Christ three months remember the disciples when they walked with Jesus we will follow you they said Jesus kept looking at them especially Peter as soon as Judas came to kiss Jesus, he landed in trouble. You see how they all left? The only person that stood with Jesus at the cross was John the Beloved. Where were all the people who enjoyed his meal? The recipients of his miracle, the five loaves and two fish. Where were the people he healed? Listen to me. If you want to live a life of excellence spiritually, you must commit yourself to loving the Lord. There are many people who open their Bibles on Sundays and they don't open it again till another Sunday. Prayer, except it is emergency. Otherwise, God, let your message just speak. This is the year that you will make up your mind to be systemic about your spiritual growth. Most of us grew up and saw our parents. Some of them were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They could not pray in tongues. But as soon as they woke up the first thing, their Bibles were at their side. Is that true? You saw that happen, that ritual for over 25 years. It may be 10 minutes of devotion, but they, it did not fail. We must return back and discipline ourselves to take the issue of our spiritual life seriously. When someone is not spiritual as an individual, when he becomes a worker in church, he will transfer his unseriousness spiritually to that department. It's as simple and honest as that. Is that true? If an unserious man meets an unserious woman, even if they are joined in church, they will all take their different versions of spiritual unseriousness. And that, that home will be it will be a hub for demons and yokes and curses and all kinds of things. And many of us, sincerely speaking, we come from backgrounds not to scare you, but by default, there are already yokes and covenants waiting for your unseriousness to play out. God is, your destiny and that of your children is at the mercy of your spiritual growth. Listen, you run based on what is pursuing you. If a fowl is pursuing you, can a chicken is pursuing me, I can run. But if a lion is pursuing you, there are many of us, you are yet to examine what is really pursuing you. You heard that your grandfather served idols and died. Your grandmother served idols and died. And they said the first male, which is you, should be the person who will be the next priest. Now you said it's not my business. And you see what your life is becoming. It takes high level spirituality to break free in experience from those things. Please take serious what I'm telling you. There are people, there is no explanation to their failure except that there are yokes of darkness that try to tie them down. The decision to be spiritual. What happens as a father when your child tells you, I had a dream, I've been seeing dreams of graves. He said, that's all right. He's, I think you are watching a bad movie. You see that? Whereas this child is communicating something. Imagine if Samuel were not spiritual. If Eli were not spiritual. Yes, even though his eyes were getting dim, he was discerning enough. When Samuel came and met him and said, there is, a, there is something happening to me. I'm hearing your voice. He said, uh-huh. You mentor based on your growth. You lead based on your growth. Let me challenge especially the gentlemen in this church and the men in this church. Your family will be a reflection of the level of spiritual dexterity you have or otherwise. No matter what else you have, if it is minus God, you're on your way to disaster. The decision to know God and to be serious spiritually. 
a woman once reported her husband that he never calls for prayer they tried in the morning it didn't work they tried in the night it didn't work but anytime there's trouble he can call anybody anytime even in the afternoon and gather the whole family and say they must pray I don't know about you but I am where I am today by the grace and the mercy of God I would rather lose every other thing but not his presence we live in a wicked world when you leave Jesus Christ you will find out that every other thing you've held on to is transient men will leave you in a heartbeat systems will leave you in a heartbeat your job will throw you out if they have an alternative you better hold on to that friend that's ticket closer than a brother. Don't let men make Jesus Christ look like an outdated issue in your life. Your phone rings with a Christian song. You quickly off it because you don't want to fall your hand. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than if all i have is jesus i've got something more than gold i will tell it to the world jesus is more than gold i truly believe there are people here and outside and those following you're saying apostle this jesus thing bah, i i want to try it's not about trying it's about genuinely submitting yourself to see the value listen if i ask you sit down here sir and i don't tell you why even when you are tired you are not motivated to keep sitting but if i tell you there is a lion close to you and your safety is to sit down there your body cannot tell you you are tired the revelation of what is behind you the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower it says the righteous run it to eat and they are saved my dear people our world is a wicked world don't say i'm a celebrity everybody loves me get into a situation where you need help that's when you will understand you will understand the 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 self-centeredness of men there is one who can love you just as you are jesus the decision to know god it means the decision to study your Bible. You get too big to study your Bible or too busy to study your Bible, you're in trouble. It's an attack. Too busy to pray. Too busy to learn the ways of God. Your pastor would teach and the Holy Spirit would tell you, you need to listen to that message. In that message is the security of the next five years of your life. But then the devil occupies us with all kinds of things. Hear me, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it but in vain. When I started out in life and ministry, there were people who were running. You would think after one year, they would not give room for ministry again. Sometimes I, I challenged a few of them and I said, calm down. The way you are going about ministry, you will fail. You don't understand. This is how this thing is done. Some of them today, I'm not sure. They are even in Christ sincerely you see ba when you walk with god your life looks deceptively slow keep moving with him god does not rush people he gives speed there is a difference between speed and hurry god builds you for a long time you will, you will look at yourself using the indices of men and feel stupid for being serious with God. I've been a worker in this church for four years. Lord, it looks like nothing is happening. Yet you did not know that in prophecy 2022 was the year that God will lift you all of a sudden. And this is what people will say, where did he come from? There is nobody who comes from nowhere. Just because you are not there during the time of training does not mean the person was not trained. There are many of you I sense in my spirit that you have committed your heart to serve God. You have served in this church. People have laughed at you. You've even felt stupid serving God. I came here to prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus who sent me. I decree unto you, may this be your season of appearance. 
your life will be a testament that it pays to serve Jesus please sit down the decision to know the Lord and the decision to excel spiritually the first speak the first index for measuring growth and and um, a life of meaning from scripture is the health of your spiritual life hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the health of your spiritual life dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.